Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to send an email with Python using SendGrid. So first off, you're going to want to go ahead and verify your domain name inside SendGrid. So it will involve having a SendGrid account, then you can go ahead and start creating your API key. I've noticed this button seems to glitch out a bit and you'll probably need to press it two times and the second time will work out. It's good to give your API key only the access it needs. And because we're just trying to send an email here, I'm just going to grant full access to mail send. It doesn't need access to anything else. The reason that's good is if your API key is compromised, then um, no one's going to be able to do too much with it. Um, and also you wouldn't typically share your API key. You can see mine on screen. I'm going to go ahead and delete this API key after this tutorial, but I just want to show you it all um, in full. I'm going to add a .m file and I'm going to just add my API key here. This is basically going to be my environment variable so I can like show how it would happen if I had the API key uh, set as an environment variable because you wouldn't want to um, actually have that inside your code base in GitHub because then it can get compromised. One of the things you're going to want to do is uh, do the command, the pip command to install SendGrid, and then you're going to want to import SendGrid. You're also going to import OS because you're going to use that to get the environment variable with the API key. And you're also going to import a couple of things from SendGrid helpers.mail. Um, so it's mail, email, the to, and the content. Uh, later we'll also show you how to attach an um, attachment and send that as well. So first off I'm getting that environment variable so I can get the API key. I've called that SendGrid API key. Next I'm going to send, create this SendGrid object that can be used to send um, send to the send the email via the SendGrid API client. So I'm going to pass that API key in there so that it has a reference to the API key. So when I go to send my emails, it's going to work. I'm going to create my from email address, which is just going to be an email address from the domain that I've verified inside SendGrid. The two email address can be whatever you want. You can also do like CCs and BCCs if you want. Just look at the SendGrid documentation that I'll link in the description. Just going to send that to my email address so I can show you that's come through. You'll add a subject as well that can be the like line that the the title basically of the email when it comes through. And then we're going to go ahead and add some content. Initially, I'm just going to have this be like plain text, but you can also make it HTML and stuff like that. So you can actually have quite a nice like email template if you want. But yeah, to start, I'm just going to have some text. Then you're going to combine that all into a mail object. So you're going to have that from email, the to email, the subject and the content. And then from there, you can get the JSON that you're actually going to send via that SendGrid API that you've set up. So we're going to go ahead and send that and we'll get the response back as a post request. So we're going to send as a post. And then we're going to go ahead and print out the response um, status code and also um, we will print out a little bit more of the response, specifically the headers. This is going to be useful for showing you guys a few different things like what happens if you've got like the wrong API key or an unverified user. Okay, you can see I've got an issue here. I've used that from keyword and it's a reserve keyword. So I'm just going to have to change my variable name for the from email address. I'm 
just change that to from email and update that as well in that mail object. So let's try again. You can see this looks a little bit more successful. I've got a few headers printed out down here and the response is 202. So it should be getting processed. There is this act activity page that you can use to check email activity, but sometimes it takes a little while to sync through to there. So you can see it's loading at the moment and it doesn't find any results, but I do have my email there when I check there. If I go back there a bit later, you'll be able to see um, the emails there. So I'll show you that a bit later, but I'm going to first show you what happens if you've got the wrong API key. Uh, this could happen if um, maybe um, so you'll get this 401 authorized and it could happen if like someone deletes your API key. Cool. So I'm going to set that back to correct and I'm going to show you what happens if you try to send an email from an email that you have not verified yet. So I'm just copying my own email in which I haven't verified with SendGrid yet. And when I run it, I get 403 forbidden because I haven't verified that email. So it can't send emails using that email. Now I'm going to show you how to make an HTML email. I'm going to go ahead and just add to this email. I'm just going to add some bold to this, just something really basic, just to show you how to do it. Um, there's no point in showing you any complex HTML. You can just learn that and um, create a template that suits your needs. So we've got 202 again, so head on over and I can see that that friend is bolded, which is great. It's matching up with my template, uh, with my yeah, HTML template. You can see now that when I click that search, I can get a bit of information about the emails that have been delivered and sent. And it gives you a bit of details about when this has happened as well. So this is useful for if like someone's saying they didn't receive an email, you can go and dive into it and check if there were any issues there. It'd also be useful to probably um, log the status code and headers if you were using this in a production system so you can sort of refer back to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add a attachment to an email. So there's a couple of things we're going to need to do. going to need to import a couple of extra things. We're going to import base64 so we can base64 encode it for sending. We're also going to want to import attachment, file type, file name, sorry, file, yeah, file, yeah, file name, file type, and disposition. These will be used in creating the attachment that we can then attach to the mail and send. So we're going to open our file, which is just that cb.pdf, and I'm going to include that in the repository so you can just play around with that without having to create your own file. And then we can go ahead and read the data from that file. And we can close that file. Then we can go ahead and get the encoded base64 data, which we can use to create the attachment. Now we've got our attached file here that we're creating using that attachment that we've imported. So we'll provide the file content, which is that encoded file, the file name, and the file type.
file name can be whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to name mine the same as what it is in this file directory. And then you've got your file type as well. So application slash PDF because I've got a PDF file here. You can just look up the different file types online if you want to. And then I provide the disposition, which is attachment. And from here, I can go ahead and add it to that mail object that I created earlier. I'll just set that mail.attachment to be the attachment, the attached file. Then it'll be included in that mail JSON when I generate it and sent accordingly. So you can see that when I run that, I'm getting that um, all those headers in the 202 again, and I can see my attachments over here, and it looks exactly as I, as I expect it to. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.